Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmony Of liberty Let our rejoicing rise High as the listening sky Let it resound Loud as a rolling sea. Hello, and welcome to Amherst Media's Juneteenth special for 2021. I am your host, Dr. Demetria Rougeau Shabazz, and I have the pleasure today of having two guests who are involved with the organization of the Juneteenth celebration this year and also a commemoration for the Civil War plaques that have long been in storage in Amherst but will now be shared once again with the community. Today I have uh, the honor of having uh, Deborah Bridges, who's a member of a family that has been here for more than five generations, I dare say six, counting uh, the indigenous peoples that her family uh, has also descended from. She's part of the Bridgets, Bridges and um, Robert Bateman uh, family. Mm -hmm. And so she will be our guest, uh, along with Dr. Amilkar Shabazz, who is a faculty member at UMass's Afro-American Studies uh, program. And they will be discussing their involvement with the Juneteenth celebration this year. So, welcome. Thank you. Dr. Shabazz. <laughs> This year's celebration of Juneteenth um, has a special focus. Previous years, we have organized it um, within the community, and it was to educate others on Juneteenth and for folks to definitely celebrate the ending of uh, slavery uh, with us. But this year, we have a special focus on the soldiers who fought to make emancipation and uh, the ending of slavery a reality. Can you please talk to us uh, about that connection uh, to Amherst and how it will be marked in the upcoming day of events for June 10th or June 19th? Sure, thank you and so glad to take part in this discussion. Um, if we go back to 1861 um, when the southern states, the various states, decide to secede from the, from the United States. Um, and this leads to what we refer to as the Civil War, or the War of the Rebellion. Um, at that time, African Americans could not serve in the U.S. military. They were not able to be soldiers, they were not able to be sailors at all in the U.S. military. There was uh, many people spoke out against this. Henry Highland Garnett, um, Frederick Douglass, Sojourner Truth, Harriet Tubman offered herself and, uh, to, 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 for, the, for the war effort. But it took some time before military necessity forced the commander in chief, Abraham Lincoln, to revise the military's policy and begin to allow African Americans to volunteer and to serve in the, in the fight. Um, as this happens right here in the town of Amherst, um, many African Americans are going to answer the call. Some of them are their ancestors directly of, uh, of Deborah Bridges. Um, they will serve in a regiment that's organized in uh, Massachusetts called the 54th. 
Some of them will also serve in a cavalry division because they're such excellent people with horses and horsemen that they will serve in the cavalry division, the fifth cavalry. So while Emmer sends approximately 300 um, of, its, of its sons to serve in the fight, some of them including the son of the president of Amherst College, serves and dies in the fight. Um, 30, about 30 African Americans, so about 10%, are going to uh, volunteer and serve in the fight as well. And as, and as if, if you've ever seen the film Glory about the 54th, you know it was fraught with so much um, conflict. The, uh, one of the things that said the Southern, the Confederate troops would not give quarter. So if you were in a battle and you surrendered, where you would normally be taken as a prisoner of war, the Confederates were saying they wouldn't take blacks as prisoners of war. You'd be, you'd be executed on the spot. So you knew that in volunteering, you were really putting your life fully on the line. And yet 30 are going to go out of their way to support this effort to bring about what we call Juneteenth. So the focus on the families, the focus on the lineage, the heritage, right here in Amherst, is so important this year to, to take stock of. And, and, and this brings us even to after the war is over, when the Grand Army of the Republic Veterans Association is organized uh, in 1867, down the line, they're going to want to set up a permanent, uh, lasting kind of tribute to those soldiers and sailors from Amherst. And I was just in South Hadley this morning where my son, one of my, um, and, and I noticed the, the uh, they have a, a Civil War uh, statue right there on their commons and, the, and, and, it, and it honors the soldiers. Other areas around here, there are things that honors the soldiers, but Amherst, what they decided to do was to create these Civil War tablets and unfortunately, um, we'll go into the story of why, of, of, well, we won't talk about the unfortunate, we're going to talk about the joyousness that this Juneteenth, we're going to be visible again. Thank you. Um, before we get to Deborah, because we want to know about your connection, of course, to Amherst and to the Civil War tablets, and it's a, a wonderful story um, that includes your, your father, Dudley yes. Bridges. Um, the start of the celebration on this Juneteenth will begin at 10 o'clock yes. um, and start in the West Cemetery on Triangle Street. Yes. So there'll be a, um, a kind of rededication of um, the, the grounds there. And as I understand, many of your family members are also buried there in yes, West Cemetery. Yes. So Deborah, if you could share with us, <laughs> um, you know, your story, but also the story of Dudley Bridges, uh, your, your father, Dudley Bridges Sr., um, who, as I understand, was a World War II veteran, um, and how he in his, uh, you know, he could have been enjoying the rest of his retirement, Mm -hmm. um, but he really worked um, yes. with folks in the community, but it was mainly led by him to preserve and restore these Civil War tablets that had been in, in storage. And so if you could speak to that a bit, please. Uh, my dad was really passionate once he found out these tablets were in storage and he wanted to get them out get them displayed and, and have a permanent uh, fixture so people could actually come in and see. And he went to the town and he went to different businesses with cement people, l lumber. They, they all came together and said, yes, Dudley, they knew my dad and was like, we'll donate this, we'll donate that, we'll put something together to, to get them to get a permanent place for them. And um, he got a lot of um, 
he got a lot of people to come together. He raised money, and um, at that point, he passed away. When he passed away, they went back into storage. So when I came back here, when I moved back to Amherst, and my daughter Anika, who's spearheaded this, um, got these, it took us a while, but got these tablets out of storage, and at least to be displayed at the Bang Center, at the Bang Community Center in Amherst, um, for right now, and trying to get a permanent place for them is what he really wanted and what we're still striving to do. But it, but we're just happy that it, that these, these tablets are out for the town to see, for the people that lived here to see their relatives' names, our relatives' names. We have um, my great, great, great grandfather, Christopher Thompson, who is actually in Galveston on June t on Juneteenth to let these people know, no, the, you have to free these people because it, it's been a minute and you didn't know, but we're here to tell you, you are free. And he is buried at the West Cemetery along with my dad and my mom and my grandfather who was 106 when he passed away in Amherst. He played the banjo all over Europe and his, his picture is up on the mural. And this is just something that we, my daughter and I, Anika, really wanted to see it come to fruition because this is what my dad wanted and we are not stopping until that happens. That's amazing. I mean, you're, you're talking about your father had spent some time um, you have going to different folks that he knew, getting money together, raising funds, getting these tablets restored, Absolutely. only for the tablets to go back in, back into, into a storage. dusty storage. <laughs> and I mean, he got you know people came to him with, I have this material, you can use this cement. You got the lumberyard. We'll put together whatever you want. And. It's just, it's, it, it was disheartening because after he passed, and it's like they went back into a dusty storage. Right. So luckily, um, um, with Anika's push, um, they are out and they are for people to see. Awesome. So they have been on, uh, well, they've, they've been stored in the bank center temporarily yes. for about a month? For about a month or two, yes. How was it um, to see these tablets set up uh, mm -hmm. within the bank center? How was that for you? Well, when I first went in there, it's like, when you see them, but when I went in, it's like I got goosebumps. I felt like my dad was standing there. He was standing there with me saying, you know, with me and Anika saying, good job. We're not done yet, but good job. <laughs> and I just felt him right there with me in just tears, you know, because, you know, it took a lot. And he tried so very hard. And just it was disheartening that, you know, that was one of the last things he wanted. It's in his obituary. And, you know, 20 years later, right. you know, we're almost there, Dad. <laughs> they they really are, are quite stunning and quite impressive. Um, the marble, from what I understand, is from Rutland, Vermont, so yes. it's very local. Um, really beautiful, and I, I hope folks on uh, Juneteenth yes. um, will include in their celebration going to see at the Bang Center. They'll be able to see the tablets. They'll uh, be able tablets. to see that once we get to the from the cemetery to the Bang Center. We have a walkthrough for people to go in and actually look at the tablets, touch the tablets, see their family's well, name not on the tablet. Touch them. Well, not touch them. <laughs> but take a photo. you can take yeah. a photo of right. them, see their family's <laughs> name, find their yeah. name on it because there's so I mean, I I looked at the family names, not only my family, but there's there's people that I went to school with from first grade to through twelfth grade and I've seen their family names. Right. So there'll be there's so many people from Amherst that 
you know, families are going to go there and feel proud and recognize their family name on there. Absolutely, including the Dickinsons. Including There's the Dickinsons, the Kelloggs, right. they're, they're right on there. Right. So could you both speak to, um, I know that uh, this year the celebration is, is quite large, part of it having to do with not only um, centering the Civil War plaques, but this is the first year where the state of Massachusetts will be recognizing officially Juneteenth. If you could speak to what is planned um, for June 19th this year. Well, um, we're starting off at, this, at the West Cemetery to have um, uh, speakers. Um, the MC would, will be, um, I don't want to give it all the way, but the MC would be William Harris, Jr. He's the president and CEO of uh, Houston Space Center. Space Center Houston, right. Space Center Houston, I'm yeah, sorry. No. And my cousin. Yeah. Um, and we're, and, you know, from there we're going to honor the soldiers, honor my dad, um, and from there, we're going to have the horse-drawn horse, horse -drawn carriages going to the Bangs Community Center, where we'll have refreshments and the choir singing, um, some more speakers. We have um, rep state representative senators will be speaking to go into the um, Bangs Center and actually view the, the tablets. And from there, it's to the common where we have a celebration from um, the afternoon with um, black um, owned vendors with f food, um, re refreshments, storytelling, magicians. And uh, that goes until about five o'clock. And then there's a sunset reception at the Mill District, which is, um, includes um, art and um, a hat fashion show um, hats by my daughter Anika, who's a milliner. She who's makes a mil she makes she makes hats. couture hats yeah. from all hand all handmade. So she has her hat show, fashion show there. Other black artists showing their their and others showing their um, art in the art gallery. So it's it's going to be a great time. Um, the graphics, the beautiful graphics um, with Juneteenth and. That's another relative who did the graphics, uh, Roddy Bridges. Um, so it's going to be a really exciting day, and I don't think anyone should miss it. Not at all. This is, um, I, I think it's going to be quite unique yes. for Amherst in general, but particularly yes. uh, celebrating Juneteenth here in Amherst. My connection, of course, to, to Juneteenth is I'm from Texas. I'm from Galveston, Texas. So um, it, it's so great for me to come full circle and, and be with a relative that was there uh, reading, you know, at that, that proclamation with General Granger. So I'm just yeah. truly honored. It's, uh, it's, it, it, it's, I'm honored just to be a part of this and, and it's something that Amherst has never seen. And it's, mm. and it's something that we're gonna make mm. hopefully um, every year and hopefully it's, it'll be national. That's, that's, that's what hope. I'm praying for, national. Right, but this is something that I don't think anybody should miss. This is a, a first time celebration that, that includes you know, a, a gorgeous day. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's absolutely free of charge. Free of, everything is free. People Every just free show of up charge. You, you and come enjoy. And come and enjoy yeah. and, and um, help the, the vendors with their food on the common. You know, they'll right. you be able to purchase all the, you know, their, their, their wares and their, their food. And it's going to be a great day. Wonderful. Could you uh, speak, uh, Dr. Shabazz, um, about the uh, historical significance of the state of Massachusetts um, making the, the decision? Like, who was responsible for that, um, proclaiming it an official holiday for the state of Massachusetts? Massachusetts is certainly a far uh, uh, cry from the state of Texas, where you and I are both uh, from. Yeah. So can you speak a little bit about how that happened? Well, as Deborah has said, and as you pointed out, it, it shows the, that we're all connected. The fact that you had soldiers from Amherst 
1865 <laughs> in Galveston on June 19th, 1865. This is one struggle. Absolutely. This is where one people is one struggle. So our families are all interconnected. And so we are celebrating that. And, and, um, but when the legislators, this right after George Floyd's death, George Floyd being from Texas as well, but, um, you know, there was a lot of concern. What can we do? How can we change things? And folks were starting to say, well, Massachusetts already celebrates Juneteenth as an official holiday. And I knew better. Uh, <laughs> I knew that there's a proclamation the governor would make. Governor Deval Patrick had started and, and then uh, Baker was continuing where it was just recognized as a day the same way as you might recognize Arbor Day and celebrate trees. <laughs> but it wasn't an official state holiday. So I simply pointed out to our, our legislators here, Mindy Dom, Joe Comerford, to Bud Williams over in Springfield. They then spread the word to the, uh, to the different caucuses and uh, they got support from the Asian American uh, um, legislators. They got support from Latinx legislators. And before you know it, they had put, out, put, a, put together a bill to make it an official state holiday and it sailed through. Uh, both both chambers put it on Governor Baker's desk. I think they attached it to an amendment to some to an important yes. legislation on COVID or something. But nobody opposed the amendment. It it went through and then it's get there on Baker's desk. He could have struck it out, but people had talked to Baker. People his own awareness. He said absolutely, we're going to do this, and so it became. And and Massachusetts now is among. Um, uh, over a dozen states where it is an official oh. holiday. The first, of course, was Texas in 1980. <laughs> Other states have come along. Recently, Oregon even came. The state of Oregon has come along as an official holiday. So uh, more states are adding. But we feel like, just as you said, we don't need to go state by state now. Let's make it a national holiday. Absolutely. Senator Ed Markey, uh, our own Massachusetts senator, has introduced it uh, in the 117th Congress this past February um, uh, as, a, as legislation to make it a national holiday. In the House, our, our good friend Sheila Jackson Lee has it, and, uh, and they both have a number of co-sponsors. In the Senate, he has 60 co-sponsors, so he's got bipartisan support. This is not, this should go through. So we really think that um, we might have an announcement by June 19th that it has passed, or very soon we hope that it will be a national holiday. Wouldn't that be amazing? Wow. Um, in closing out, I'm just remembering, uh, we have gone to the Japanese Black Studies Association. You've been a couple of times, I've been once. And because um, uh, the uh, African-American experience and African-American scholarship um, is worldwide, um, JBSA has also recognized uh, Juneteenth. So this isn't something that's just staying here. Uh, people are recognizing it worldwide, wanting to commemorate and celebrate freedom of, uh, you know, formerly enslaved black people. And um, I think that's, uh, that's what we really need to, to look at. This is, this is who we are. And as you say, we're all connected. And we hope that everyone comes out to join us in celebration of Juneteenth in Amherst this year for 2021. Be high up on the hog, you know, in the words of Jessica Harris, we, we, we like it high on the hog. So uh, they like it now in Japan, they're liking it all over the world. Uh, and so we, of course, love it right here too. It, it, it's the culture, it's everything. It's not just the freedom and the history, it's the whole piece. It's, it's all that we bring this country, the joy, the music, the dancing, the hats, the, the food, <laughs> the fashion, Definitely the, the food. <laughs> it's all that we it's, bring. Yes. You know, it was 11 years ago that one of the first times it was celebrated uh, in Amherst. The Cage family, Edward Cage and Vera Duomini Cage, got folks together out at Groff Park. And that's where I first met them. They, you know, and they were eating high up on the hog then. So Anastasia Morton was involved with it, all these folks. So, um, 
uh, Amherst Media, I think people had even gotten the camera and covered some of it. So, you know, we, it's been around. We just now make, have made it um, a state holiday. We're on the way to making it a national holiday. And it really is a day to celebrate fun, to celebrate family. As you can see here, the lineage of this family, the Bridges, the Roberts, the Baez's, the Batemans, all of these families that have been a part of Amherst for so long, you know, and uh, um, that, that, that have pushed through all forms of discrimination to, to make, to have homes on Hazel Avenue and off Snell Street and, 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 to, and to forge free lives here. That set the foundation for how we could set, have free lives in Texas, how we could have free lives and make black lives matter in Louisiana, in Mississippi, Alabama, all these places. We, our lives matter and we show that through Juneteenth. Yes. Thank you both. You're welcome. See you there. See you there. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark path has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun. Of a new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark path has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Faith in the rise.